so one of the biggest comments, everybody's like, well, how come, you know, the YF23 has gotten like reignited on the internet. Yeah. Everybody's a fan yeah. now. Everybody thinks it should have mm -hmm. been, you know, it, or even there was talk about bringing it back and making it mm -hmm. the sixth gen fighter. I mean, what do you think about all that and all the, the hype that it's now getting, what is it? 30 years I'd later. My honest opinion is it's a sexier looking airplane, period. I mean, that's it. You know how fighter pilots are. They go. Oh for, yeah. I'm uh, these aren't fighter pilots. These are all. I know that. Just, I know yeah. that. <laughs> it's, it's, when you look at the two airplanes side by side, you kind of drool over to 23 and you kind of say, Oh, that's kind of neat one over there too. And they just looked out <laughs> and they uninitiated and uninformed. But the talkers say, why isn't that airplane in the inventory? It's so cool looking. That's the kind of guys you run up against. And I told you this two years ago, I guess it was. My job when I was there in the program was to make sure that whatever they chose, it was going to be good for the pilots and the maintainers and the manufacturing people, such that you could pick it based on playing horseshoes in the White House lawn. I didn't care because it would have met the requirements. And the fact that one has a little bit of this and a little bit of that, you know, it's kind of like blondes and brunettes and what have you. And now we have Fat Amy, which meets none of those requirements. Not a good looking, <laughs> she's not yeah, a good looking not, girl. No. Let me tell you, let me tell you, you'd rather have that than the Boeing entry. That's true. <laughs> That's, That's true. 100%. That's, that's true. First, Wait. first time I saw that, I said, "Hmm, I don't think this is going to be a success here. Don't know no. why. Just, just <laughs> a f I am. So some um, attack up to base ops in that Hummer. I don't know. Maybe it was. I, I, I had, I had little to do with it, to be honest with you. Yeah, it's pretty ugly. It. Uh, I did get a lot of guys coming down saying, "Why was this program successful?" I said, well, the main reason, I think, is that we kept our focus on what was going to be coming out of the full-scale development, not the prototypes. The prototypes, frankly, in my opinion, were a marketing tool. What you really learn about the design, you knew already. Otherwise, you wouldn't have flown the bloody thing. And so to, to make sure that you were going to have a complete and successful program in FSD or EMD or whatever we called it back then, you had to make sure you were keeping your eyeball on what was going to come out of this that was going to go into the development the next step. And if you kept focusing on the prototypes, you would lose sight of what they didn't do and forget about it, and then you'll have to do it in EMD, and you're going to waste a lot of money and time because you didn't focus on, let's get these requirements right in the first time. Because if you ask for too much, you aren't going to get it, and you're going to spend a lot of money wasted trying to get it when it wasn't there. So I told him, I said, look, if you want to do it the way you're going to do it, which I think is stupid, but that's okay. <laughs> You got to keep focused on what, what do the Marines really need and what can they live with? What, what's the Navy really need? What can they live with? And what does the Air Force really need and what can they live with? Now you'll soon find out they all don't go in the same bag. And this, this hor this, excuse my French, this stuff about saving all this money in commonality is kind of foolish. But if you keep your focus on what the A model, B model, and C model are really going to do, and really have to achieve, you'll be a lot better off than will you be trying to keep everybody in the same box. And I, I don't know how it happened. I wasn't there. I didn't get hired to do it. I guess I was too expensive. <laughs> but that, that's, that's the biggest <clears throat> lesson I could give them when they came and asked me, how did you do this? And I, and I just kept telling them, I said, keep your eye on what the real requirements are, not what these guys are going to do in flight tests. And everybody's going to, and I'll tell you, one of the reasons that I didn't put any requirements on in flight tests, 
I said, you guys build your airplanes and you can do whatever you want with them. I don't care. And I told, I told Mover this last time. The only requirement on those two airplanes, or those four airplanes actually, was that it has to take off under its own power, period. Doesn't have to come back, doesn't have to land, doesn't have to go very far, take off, fly the rank and runway, land, and you met the contractual requirement. And so it's up to you to decide what you're gonna do with it to prove to yourselves that you can do what you're gonna do in the, in the program. And then I, another thing I told, told you last time, I did this thing called secret envelope. There were no performance requirements on those airplanes, none, except take off under its own power. Wow. I think it was a two sentence requirement. No mock, no mock, no sustained G, no piece of S, none of that stuff, period. And I, I then said, the whole purpose of this is to tell, prove to me and others, I'm talking about me a lot, that you know what the hell you're doing and you can prove and you can make happen what you promise. So about a year and a half before the actual flight test, I said, you send me an envelope and you tell me what you're going to do. I don't care what it is. You want to fly 10 miles, circle a pattern, come back and land, and that's it? Fine. Good. Now, I know they're going to do a lot more, but I didn't tell them to do that. So I got this seal envelope and I said, just send it in. Tell me what you're going to do. Don't care. You want to demonstrate piece of best? Great. You want to, duck, you want to do Excel? You want to do this? Saying, gee, whatever. Don't care. Just write it down and give it to me. And they did. And sure enough, they did what they said they were going to do. Those airplanes met what they claimed they were going to do. I said, super. Now I can believe better that you can predict what the end result is going to be before we get too far into this program. And it worked. And so I told them that, that thing too. I said, you put a requirement on those prototypes, two things are going to happen. They ain't going to make it. You're going to get in a lot of trouble. Yeah. Because if it gets to be public, Congress, the New York Times, the Washington Post, the Center of Ohio publications. <laughs> come out and say, Look how they screwed up. They didn't do what they're supposed oh, yeah. to do. Take their money away. Oh, they're bad guys. So you don't tell them. And yeah. they did anyway. And they got in trouble. What can I tell you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I so informed you thusly. I told you guys that. Uh, no.